Hi guys, thanks very much for joining me. And we're going to move on from labour disunity and the formation of the SDP to start looking at Thatcher's economic policies. And she follows a policy of monetarism. Now, if we're going to understand that, we need to compare it with what was there before. Now, prior to that, a lot of economic theory had been based on the ideas of John Maynard Keynes, and it was Keynesian theory. His ideas were followed by many of the nations following World War II, Britain included, and it underpinned the British economy during the post-war consensus. So I've put a slide up in front of you, and it's known as demand side economics. What I want you to do, I want you to pause the video. I want you to look at this, make sure you understand the actual cycle. I'm also going to send it to you as PowerPoint, and I would suggest you cut this out, this slide out, the actual circle, and stick that into your book. Make sure you annotate it to show that this was during the post war consensus. Once you've done that, we'll move on and look at monetarism. Now, monetarism was an alternative theory, and it's promoted by Milton Friedman, and he's from the Chicago School of Economists. And he argues that it's controlling inflation and reducing spending that is a way that you control the economy. And it's actually reducing the amount of money that is going around inside the economy, which is the way to control it. And this idea of reducing the amount of money in the economy is known as monetarism. And Margaret Thatcher follows this theory. So it's really important you've got in your heads now. Margaret Thatcher follows monetarist principles. She's making a very clear step away from the post-war consensus. You need to make sure you understand this. What I want you to do is to also start a table. And this table is going to carry on over the next two or three lessons, starting a complete fresh piece of paper, something you can keep returning to. Because what I'm going to want you to do throughout the next two or three lessons is compare the similarities and differences between post-war economics and Thatcher's economics. Because when it comes to writing an essay, one of the key things you've got to be able to do is identifying differences, but also identifying similarities. Where do things not change? What carries on? What changes? This table is really going to help you be able to do that. Now, with that in mind, let's start looking at what happens in 1979. Now, Margaret Thatcher becomes prime minister. And what happens very quickly is they have a budget. And it's Geoffrey Howe, who's been shadow chancellor since 79, and he introduces his fifth budget. And we see some real key changes happen. And I've highlighted those in bold. And I want to ensure that you get that information that's in bold into your notes. So VAT is rising from 12.5% on luxury items. These are discretionary items and 8% on other goods to a single rate of 15%. So VAT has increased to 15% on all items. However, the basic rate of income tax drops from 33% to 30%. And if you're at the top rate, so if you're a high earner, it drops from 83% to 60%. At the same time, there are reductions in public spending. So reductions in healthcare, reductions in welfare, reductions in all the things, all the infrastructure for society, there's a reduction in spending at the same time. So we're seeing that increase by 15%. That means the price of shopping is going to increase, but income tax is decreased. So that means if you're a worker, you're being paid more money. Margaret Thatcher is essentially saying, that you are going to be allowed to make a decision as to where you spend your money. The government's not going to make that decision for you now. You can decide where you're spending your money. That's why we're giving your money back to you. So we need to think about the effect of this. Let's have a look at income tax decreasing. Who's it actually going to help? Well, in reality, it only helps you if you're in employment. If you've got a wage, you now get to keep more money from that wage and you're able to decide how to spend it. And supporters of this say it's a good thing. It encourages people to work. It encourages people to find a job 
and it creates wealth. And it's a move away from what is known as direct taxation. Direct taxation is this idea that you are taxed at source. So when you get your income, the tax comes straight away. And instead, they move to indirect taxation. So value added tax, this is an indirect tax. Who's this going to harm? Well, it's actually going to harm those who are already struggling. Those who are unable to find work now find that the price of items actually increases. And critics of the government say that it's transferring the burden of indirect taxation onto the poorest. It means they are hit the hardest. So this is a real fundamental change from post-war consensus to monetarism. This is Thatcher's economic policy starting to come into play. So what do I want you to do as your assignment? The piece of work I'm going to want to see off you. I've given you a number of questions and I want you to research these in the book. So you've got page numbers there in front of you. You need to answer all of these questions. I want you to add notes to these. It's no good just adding one or two lines. You need to add some detail to this in order for you to understand what's been happening. And that information will be useful when we start to construct an argument later in our essays. As always, drop me a line. Get in touch if you're not sure about anything, but all the information is in the textbook. I would also say, though, don't forget that wider reading. Have a dig around on the Internet. See what else you can find. Andrew Moore is always a good place to start. You've got the Thatcher documentary that's still on BBC iPlayer at the moment. And Andrew Moore is on BBC iPlayer as well. Make sure you start doing a little bit of research wider than what's just in that textbook. OK. I'll leave to it. Thanks very much. Bye bye.